The school year is starting. Congratulations to all of you who made it into music school. I thought I would put together this little video to give you a few tips on what you can expect at the beginning of this new chapter of your lives. First things first, I did talk about this before, but schedule your practice time. Beginnings and the end times. You actually have to commute to and from the practice room. This threw me for a loop entirely. Just walking to and from the practice room ate into what I thought was an hour of practice time. And I ended up with only maybe half an hour of practicing. Some schools have sign-up sheets for practice rooms. For other schools, it's first come first serve. Sometimes it can really take you a while to find a practice room. I realized that you're not only commuting between your classrooms and the practice room. Sometimes you're also commuting between your dorm room or wherever you're living to the practice room. That can be anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, depending on where you live. So make sure you account for that commuting time to and from a practice room when you are scheduling in your practice time. I suggest scheduling in your practice time sometime around Sunday night. Sunday night is when you can look at your schedule for the week and you kind of already have a rough idea of when all your classes are, when your lesson is, and when all of your rehearsals are. Depending on what you're doing in music school, your rehearsals might switch times from week to week. You can't really rely on the same practice schedule every single week. You have to really look at your schedule at the beginning of the week and plan it out from there. Now, the other thing about scheduling your practice time is also to schedule what you're practicing during those times. This is to ensure that you actually get through all the material that you need. When you're in music school, you are going to be practicing like 10 to 20 different things at the same time. You have at least five pieces for orchestra, 10 pieces for band, your own repertoire for your teacher, which includes one or two etudes, one or two orchestral excerpts, one or two major pieces of works, along with your technique work and your tone work. So yeah, you really are doing probably more than 20 things at a time. Create a rotation of material to go through in your practice time. So that way you hit everything that you need to practice throughout the week. I'm telling you guys this so that you guys don't make the same mistake as I did, okay? People will ask me to go for coffee, bubble tea, go for lunch. Because I didn't schedule in my practice time in my schedule, to me, it looked like I had a huge block of time that I could spend just hanging out with my friends. Come the end of the week, I look back at the week and I'm like, oh shoot, I missed out on a lot of hours of practice. Where did the time go? If I had just blocked out time for practicing, I could have told my friends, hey, I'll meet up with you guys later. Right now I have to practice because as you can see, this is the only time I have to practice. So I'll see you in an hour. Please heed my advice. Do not do what I did. I probably could have gone through at least five or six times as much material as I went through in music school if I had done this. Number two, be prepared for very drastic changes, especially if you are a first year going into music school for your very first time. One is your posture. So your posture is gonna be completely tweaked by your professor. Be prepared to be very uncomfortable with it. Number two is your embouchure. Your embouchure tends to be one of the first things as well to be changed when you go to a new teacher. It will be painful because essentially it's like learning to speak in a different way. The third thing that will probably be changed is your articulation. So where is your tongue hitting in your mouth? All three of these are absolutely fundamental to how you even play the flute. So you will feel like you can't play the flute, even though you just got into music school. As long as you are mentally prepared for that, you'll be fine. Keep in mind, it takes two weeks of doing the same thing every day to form a habit. You just have to power through two weeks before it starts to feel normal. How do you power through it? By scheduling in your practice time. Third thing is please set aside time to tend to your physical health. As music students, we tend to just completely disregard our physical health. But the way that we play our instrument is actually very dependent on how healthy we are. So even just taking a daily walk of about 30 minutes 
is enough to just keep you healthy. It's it's a more of a maintenance type of thing. Keep some movement going on, do some stretches, do some meditation, anything to relax you down as well as to keep your muscles moving. For any sort of woodwind brass instrument, you will definitely need to work on your core. If you work on your core, it will really help your air support as well. Watch your diet. Whatever fuel you put into your body is whatever type of energy will come out of you. So if you put healthy foods into you, a healthy energy will come out of you. If you put unhealthy foods into you, you're gonna feel sluggish. You're gonna feel like you don't really want to practice. You're just gonna feel really tired all the time. Better health equals better stamina, better productivity, and better memory. Make sure you fill yourself up with good fuel. And lastly, please make sure that you learn to separate your professional work from your personal worth. It doesn't matter how well or how badly you play your instrument. You as a person, you are worthy of love. You are worthy of respect. You are worthy of dignity. You are worthy. How you play your instrument should be separate from how you see yourself. If you play the flute badly, it does not mean you are a bad person. If you play the flute really well, it also does not mean that you're a good person. The two are not the same. This is how you take constructive criticism well. You see the criticism is of your work, it's of your output. It is not of you personally. This is also how you can actually get excited instead of depressed when you hear about things that you've never heard before. Instead of thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, I feel so stupid. I feel so dumb for not knowing that. The way you should be thinking is, wow, I never knew that. Cool. The fact that you don't know something has no reflection on your personal worth. Now that what you know is kind of in the category of your professional work, if you don't know something and now you know it, great! It enriches your professional work. Instead of seeing people who are better than you as a reflection of you just being bad, now you can be like, oh man, I can learn so many things from these people. It's something to be excited about. And lastly, it really helps maintain your mental health. When you put your personal worth into your professional work. If your professional work takes a dip, it will mean that your mental health will also take a dip. Why do I say this? I've been through it. And actually fairly recently within the last few years. It will feel like a constant chase, like you constantly have to prove that your work is good. You have to constantly be like, look at me, look at me, I'm so good, I'm so good, but actually I don't really know what I'm doing. In reality, it doesn't matter how professional you get, you always kind of feel like you don't really know what you're doing. Every time you learn something new, you're actually opening a can of worms of other things that you don't know. If you put your personal worth in your professional work, you will constantly feel like you don't know enough, you don't know enough, you don't know enough. You see how negative that is? But if you think of it more as, ooh, cool, I learned more, ooh, cool, I learned more, you'll get more excited to open the cans of worms. So instead of avoiding the cans of worms because you're like, oh man, you know, I don't want to touch that topic because that might mean that I'm, I don't know more things, now you'll want to open those cans of worms and you'll want to learn more, you want to explore more, you want to experiment more because you see it as an enrichment of your professional work and it has no bearing on your per personal worth, your personal worth stays the same. You are a great person whether or not you open those cans of worms. You see how this can prevent you from getting more depressed that you don't know things and also being more anxious that you have to like prove yourself to like know enough. I've gotten to the point now where I'm like, yeah, I'm never gonna know enough, but that's great. The prospect of becoming better is actually really fantastic. I like not staying stagnant. I feel like I would have done better in music school if I had actually done these things. So I wanted to tell them to you guys and I've been telling it to a few of my students and thought I would tell it to you guys too. Anyway, love you all very much and I'll see you guys next week.